Welcome to the COVID Masquerade, a guide on masks and returning to society. So today is week 12 of our Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. So as usual, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or any feedback, uh, we do have some polls in this webinar. So if you answer other to those polls, just type those responses all in the questions box, and you'll see that in your GoToWebinar control panel. My name is Erin Smithers. I'm the Information Referral Coordinator for the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. And we have been a division funded program with the ARC of New Jersey since 1983. We support the state's largest network of individual self-advocates and self-advocacy groups. We also provide comprehensive trainings and resources to self-advocates, direct support professionals, and agency personnel. So before we get started, the information in this webinar is very specific to the time that it is being made and posted. Uh, so all of the information included in this webinar is up to date as of today, which is June 23rd, 2020. And it is also specific to New Jersey. So when I'm talking about regulations and rules and recommendations, it's all specific to New Jersey as of June 23rd, 2020. If you're watching this webinar at a later date, I definitely recommend to check on our credible resources for updated information. And all of that is available in the handouts. I have a PDF of our resources for you to take with you. So you'll see under your handouts tab, there are three handouts and those are for you. One of those will be the resources. Today, we're going to discuss why masks are important, how to properly use and care for your masks, and up-to-date health guidelines on returning to society after the stay-at-home order is lifted, which it was last week. We are now entering in phase two in New Jersey, and the stay-at-home order was lifted. So before we get started with masks, I want to do a little recap on um, what the CDC recommends for handling the coronavirus or COVID-19. It is still out there, even though we are in phase two, a lot of people are kind of going back to work, hanging out with friends or family. Uh, it's easy to forget that this is still out there and we still need to take precautions. So this is taken directly from the CDC website. The link is at the bottom and it's also in your resources PDF. Um, the CDC is very particular about their wording, so I wanted to just capture exactly what they say because they put a lot of thought in, in what they're recommending. So this is word for word taken from the CDC for recommendations on how to handle the coronavirus. You want to still be washing your hands very often, especially um, when you're coming back home from being out, after you touch your face, after you interact with someone or something, and then just randomly too. Um, and all the times that you should be washing your hands, like after you use the restroom or before you eat. You want to avoid close contact with other people, so we're still maintaining social distancing, which is at least six feet apart from other people you don't live with. You want to use a face mask when you go out in public. You want to cover your coughs and sneezes, but you want to make sure not to do that with your hands, right? We want to use the vampire cough, what they call, where you sneeze into the inside of your elbow, and it kind of looks like the old vampire movies. But that is the safest way to um, contain the germs and bacteria that you're coughing and sneezing out without getting your hands dirty as well. You wanna make sure you're cleaning and disinfecting frequently used surfaces. So this would be your doorknobs, your countertops, your faucets, your remote controls or your cell phones, or if you have house phones, those as well. Um, if uh, it's hot out right now, so I've been opening and closing my windows a lot, I wanna make sure I'm wiping down the windows too because they've become a frequently used surface. 
And then I wear glasses. So I also wanna make sure I'm cleaning my glasses because I touch those all the time. And that might be something we don't usually think about that needs to be cleaned regularly. And then you also want to monitor your health. So this means look out for fevers, shortness of breath, chest pains or palpitations if you start to have fatigue all of a sudden and and if you get a loss of smell or taste these are all sort of symptoms that you definitely want to call your doctor about um, if you do start to get any of these symptoms i would recommend automatically quarantining yourself making sure you don't come in contact with anybody until you talk to your doctor you want to make sure you're wearing a mask around everybody and you want to wash your hands even more than you normally would once you talk to your doctor they'll give you other advice but just to be safe if you do start to show these symptoms just try to keep away from other people and barbara has some uh, questions about glasses i'm definitely going to talk about that i personally wear glasses um, and keeping them clean is very important but also they tend to fog up when i'm wearing a mask but we will talk about that So we're gonna start with a poll. I'm very interested in seeing if you already own a face mask, what type of mask it is. So do you have a cloth mask or do you have a single use mask like a surgical mask or a KN95? If you don't have any masks or other. If your answer is other, again, just place your response in the questions. Julia, face shields I would say would be other. So I'm gonna start this poll. So the answers would be yes, I have a cloth mask. Yes, I have single use masks. No, I do not own any masks or other. And like I said, if your answer is other, you can just put your response in the questions box and I'll see it. So you'll see the results are 63% um, have a cloth mask. 33% have a single use mask and 4% are other and we have zero that do not own any mask, which is kind of awesome. I'm really glad everybody's prepared. Um, I know we're kind of, we've been in this for three months already, but there are a lot of people that still have not left the house or gone out and, um, you know, seen other people. So I'm really happy to see that there are zero people who responded as, no, you do not own any masks. So that's awesome. So we're gonna go to this page. Again, this is copied word for word from the CDC. Um, they are very specific about how they word things. So I wanted everybody to see exactly what they recommend for using face masks. So you want to make sure your mouth and your nose are covered with a cloth face mask when you're around other people. Everyone should wear a cloth face cover when they go out into public, for example, going to the grocery store or to pick up other necessities. And I bolded this next point because it is very important. Cloth face coverings should not be placed on young children under two, anyone who has trouble breathing, is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance. So we want to make sure if you're already having issues with breathing, um, we don't want to block your airway any more than it is. And honestly, these are the only people that are recommended you really should not be wearing a face mask. Everyone else should be wearing a face mask, even if it's uncomfortable, even if you have um, you know, asthma or something, there are face masks for specific people and illnesses and cases. The only people that really should not be wearing a face mask are children under two and anyone who is unconscious, incapacitated, unable to remove the mask without assistance or already having trouble breathing. The cloth face cover is meant to protect other people in case you are infected. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, don't know or forget. The cloth face mask isn't to protect you. It's to protect other people in case you are infected so you don't get other people sick. You do not want to be using a face mask that is meant for a healthcare worker. And we're going to go over the specifics of each kind of mask. 
and then again you want to continue to keep about six feet between yourself and others at least six feet the cloth face cover is not a substitute for social distancing so social distancing and mask wearing are super important we need to be doing both it's not one or the other it's both so why should we wear a face mask then if it doesn't protect us because your face mask protects other people and their face masks protect you if you see in the image it's uh, meant to be a barrier to keep the virus contained so if you're wearing a face mask you're protecting everyone around you that's why it's extra frustrating when you go out in public and you see people are not wearing a mask because they're not taking the precautions to protect you it's not about wearing a mask to protect yourself you're trying to protect everyone around you so it only works if everybody is wearing a mask if you're not wearing a mask you are possibly contaminating everybody around you so that's why it's very important that everybody wears a face mask when you go out. So where should we be wearing a mask to? These are some of the places. So if you go to a store, even if you're just doing a pickup or a curbside order, um, definitely if you're going in the store, if you're going to pharmacies, restaurants, because we now know outdoor dining is available, if you're going to the salon, or if you're going to other people's houses, your friends or your family. Basically, you want to wear a mask when you're going to be an near anyone that you don't live with. You do not have to wear a mask when you're home. You do not have to wear a mask if you're going on a walk and there's nobody around you, right? Your face mask is meant to protect other people. So if there are no other people, you don't have to wear a mask. If you are going to a place uh, that's closed quarters and there's nobody there but it's not your house so if you're going to someone else's house and you go to use the restroom and there's nobody else in the restroom you still should wear a mask because you could still contaminate or spread the illness on items in that bathroom which is a very highly used place so if you don't wear a mask and you cough on the sink or you cough you know on the mirror and someone touches that it can spread that way. So hopefully um, if you're going out in public where there are other people or you're going over to places where there are people you don't live with, you're wearing a mask. So now we're gonna talk about the different types of face masks. The first one is an N95 and you'll see right on the front of the face mask, it says N95. Um, it's a respirator. It helps protect against certain particles. So this mask is a high grade mask used for frontline workers. So used for people who are dealing with people who have the virus. This is a different type of mask. We just talked about how masks are used to keep the virus contained. This also helps keep the virus from getting in. Cloth masks, um, KN95s and surgical masks don't have that kind of level of protection. So that's why this mask is reserved for doctors, police, firemen, and EMT, anyone who's on the front lines, an emergency worker. And I'm not sure if you heard, but there is a shortage of these masks. Um, so that's why they recommend these masks are only used for emergency personnel. We uh, do not need to wear this kind of mask for our everyday life, for just going to the store or for going to a walk around the neighborhood. We don't need that kind of protection. The doctors, policemen and women, firemen and women, and um, like ambulance workers, they need that kind of protection. So we should be saving these masks for them. However, there is a mask that's one level lower. It's made in China and it's the KN95. So this is fine for us to use. You can buy this mask on Amazon. It is widely available now. Um, this is a single use mask as is the N95. You should not be using this mask more than once. It is single use and then it should be thrown out. Because of the shortage, unfortunately, doctors have had to reuse their masks, the N95s. So that's why it's, again, important that we're not 
using this kind of mask and we're saving this for the people who really need it. So the KN95 is really good. Um, it has a really good protection to keeping the virus contained. It's very snug around your face. There's a metal bar around the nose, which Barbara, you had asked how you can keep your glasses from fogging up. That metal bar around your nose allows it to be completely flush with your skin or very snug around the bridge of your nose, and that can help your glasses stop from fogging up. So you can have this metal bar in cloth masks as well. And then we have our cloth masks. This is the mask that the CDC recommends everybody else wears. Um, you can make them yourself, you can buy them. They're made out of a whole bunch of material. This one specifically has ear loops that go around your ear, but then there's also ones that tie behind your head. Uh, sometimes if you're wearing masks for a very long time, those can be more comfortable for your ears. They're not um, having all that pressure from the ear loops on your ears. So you might want to look into getting one that ties behind your head instead. So cloth mask is what is recommended. This is reusable. You can uh, reuse this over and over again. You do want to wash it after every use though. So every time you wear a mask, you should either be throwing it out or washing it. And then lastly, the least protective is surgical. This is really not recommended unless you're in surgery. Um, you might see a lot of people wearing these though because they are more affordable. However, they don't offer as much protection because they don't fit snugly against your face. You'll notice that when people wear them, they have large gaps on their cheeks. And so it doesn't really stop the virus from getting out. It makes it uh, very easy for the virus to escape if you cough or if you sneeze. So they're not really recommended. What is recommended is the cloth mask. So now that we know the different kinds of masks, we're gonna learn how to wear them properly. So the first step before you put your mask on is to wash your hands. And you should know this, but you want to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, uh, 30 seconds even better. Anything less than that doesn't really do what it's intended. So you want to wash your hands. Then you're going to place the mask over your nose and your mouth and make sure it's secure under your chin. So it needs to cover your, no your nose, specifically your nostrils. It needs to cover your mouth and it should cover under your chin. You want to make sure it's snug against your face and then you want to make sure you can breathe easily. So when we're putting on a clean mask, it's okay to adjust it to make sure it's fitting you properly, to make sure it's in the right spot. But then once you leave the house, that's it. You want to really try not to touch your mask. So here's a video of me putting on a mask so you can see it being done. So the first step is, of course, we're going to wash our hands. They should already be washed. I'm going to take off my glasses. I'm going to hold my mask only by the ear loops or the head ties. And you can see that metal bar, that's foam around it, so it's comfortable. So I'm going to put it on my face, still only touching the ear loops. Put it around both of my ears. I can adjust it as needed but this is a KN95, so it fits pretty snugly. My nose, my mouth, and my chin are covered. And I have no gaps around my cheeks. It fits really well. And you can see around my nose, I can push in that metal bar to make it fit better. Put my glasses on and I'm good to go. So here's a video of me putting on a cloth face mask. It's pretty much done the same way, but I wanted you to see it. So again, the first steps, make sure your hands are washed. I'm gonna take off my glasses to make sure I can get a really snug fit. I'm holding it only from the ear loops. Put it around both my ears. And I want to make sure that I can see <laughs> that. There we go. 
So my glasses help hold the cloth covering in by my nose. So my nose is covered, my mouth and my chin are covered, so that's good. But you see on the side here, there's large gaps. So this mask doesn't really fit me that well, so I really shouldn't be wearing it out. So you can see the difference between a face mask that's snug against your face and a face mask that has those large gaps on the side. This is pretty much how a surgical mask works as well. So you'll see this face mask is just a piece of cloth. If you find a face mask that's pleated, it usually fits your face a little better. So I recommend those. So you saw me put it on, and now we're gonna talk about how to take it off because it is a little differently. So you want to untie the strings behind your head or stretch your ear loops. During this whole process, you only want to touch those strings or the ear loops. You do not wanna to touch the mask itself because you need to assume that as soon as you leave the house, your face mask is dirty. You have to assume that it is contaminated or dirty um, and you just don't wanna to touch it. So you only wanna to touch the ear loops or the ties that go behind your head. Once you take it off your ears, you're gonna kind of fold it in half, still only holding the ear loops. Then you're gonna place it in the washing machine or in the garbage if it's single use. And then be very careful not to touch your eyes, your face, or any other surfaces until you wash your hands. So I have a video of me taking off the face mask. This is a video of the KN95, but the cloth face masks work the same way. So I'm gonna take off my glasses. And you'll see this mask has ear loops, but if you have the hair ties, those are what you're going to touch only. So I'm gonna grab one ear loop and then the other ear loop. I'm going to fold it in half. And since the KN95 is a single use mask, I'm gonna, I would hold the cloth face mask the same way. Make sure not to touch your face. And like I said, since the KN95 is a single use, I would either put the cloth face mask in the washing machine or throw out the single use mask. Then I'm gonna wash my hands before I touch anything else. And you're good to go. All right. So now let's talk about washing your face mask. If you have a cloth face mask, um, oops, sorry. If you have a cloth face mask, uh, you're going to just pop it in your laundry, in your washing machine. Um, it's super easy. You don't have to do anything special. You can just throw it in with your regular laundry, use your regular laundry detergent. You want to try to use the warmest water setting that you can for the type of clothes that you're washing. And then you want to dry it on the highest heat setting you can until it's completely dry. So if you don't have a washing machine, you can also wash, also wash it by hand. So you're gonna make a bleach solution, depending on how many masks you wanna wash. There's a larger solution by using five tablespoons of disinfectant bleach with a gallon of room temperature water. Or if you're washing just one or a few masks, you can use four teaspoons of disinfectant bleach with a quart of room temperature water. So you want to make sure you're not using color safe bleach that's not going to disinfect or really clean off the virus like it should. Um, you want to make sure you're using regular disinfectant household bleach, the kind that stains everything. <laughs> and then you're going to want to soak the cloth face mask in that solution for at least five minutes. Um, you can kind of, you know, wash it around, use your hands to kind of rub it together if you want to clean it, but really it just needs to soak for five minutes. That's gonna make sure that everything that's on it that shouldn't be on it is taken off. Then you're gonna rinse it thoroughly with cool or room temperature water. 
and you want to lay it flat and make sure it dries completely. You don't want to just crumple it up and let it dry. Um, you want to lay it flat, make sure it really gets dry completely because you're going to be breathing this in. So you don't want any mold. You want to make sure there's no soap left in it. You just want it to dry completely. And the CD, uh, CDC recommends drying it in direct sunlight if you can because it um, has that bleaching effect as well. So if there's any questions about how to wash or use your face mask, just pop them in the questions tab. And now we're gonna get to how to make your own face mask. So this video is a video made by the CDC on how you can easily make a face mask with no sewing using items you have around your house. Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps with items you can find around the house, like an old scarf, a bandana or a hand towel, or you can make a face covering out of an old t-shirt. Fold it to the middle from the bottom. Fold it to the middle from the top. Fold it again to the middle from the bottom and again from the top. And then two rubber bands, one on one side and one on the other side. Then you fold either side to the middle and you have yourself cloth face covering. It's that easy. So it really is that easy. He cuts a square out of an old t-shirt and he uses rubber bands. Uh, if you are gonna use your face mask for a while, rubber bands might be uncomfortable. So you can use something else like a hair tie or ribbons, but it really is that easy. The kind of mask he made is really great for just going for a walk around your neighborhood, going to the store, doing a curbside pickup, things like that. This is not something that you should use in a professional setting or something where you need a little bit more protection. However, the good thing about the mask he just made is that you can insert a filter for extra protection as well. So now if you know somebody who um, can sew, if you can sew yourself, here's a video on how to make a very good face mask that will be form fitted to your face. Uh, very simple, it's laid out, um, and we're gonna watch that now. If you don't know how to sew, more than likely you have a neighbor or a family member who does, and you can send this video to them, and maybe they could help make some masks. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as you saw in that video, that mask was pleated. It was kind of folded. So that way, when she went to go use it, she could spread the middle so it fit over her nose and her mouth, but it still was very snug on her cheeks, which is important. When you also make a mask like this, you could insert that metal bar for your nose to go over your bridge, and that will help if you wear glasses. Like I said, it'll also help uh, it be a little bit more snug over your nose, but uh, that is one of the best homemade masks I've seen. Um, as you saw in the video, the mask that I have is not that form-fitted and really is kind of useless. Um, I can't really wear it out because it doesn't add much protection. So that's why I got the KN95 masks. So if you are going to make your own mask, these are the best kind of fabrics to use. Uh, in order from best to not so best. The worst isn't even on here. So if you're using a fabric that's not on this list, it is definitely not recommended. So you wanna use a cotton mix or 100% cotton if you use two layers. If you have an antimicrobial pillowcase or a standard pillowcase, uh, if you don't have any of those, you could use a scarf and then really the fabric that offers the least amount of protection that's still going to be better than nothing is linen. They also, um, I got this from WebMD and they did recommend tea towels uh, as a really good um, preventative uh, fabric that you could use to make a mask. However, they found that it was really hard to breathe in it. So I didn't even include that on the list because why use a fabric that you can't breathe in? You're just not gonna use that mask. Um, so, in my opinion, the best would be a cotton mix. So, if you're going to buy a face mask, here are some places where you can do that. Um, obviously, Amazon has a whole bunch of different kinds on there. That is where we got the KN95s. Um, the KN95s come in a bulk order because they are single use. You can go to Etsy, so you can have people make you um, face mask. The great thing about Etsy is you can recommend certain things. So you can recommend the pleats or you could recommend a metal bar. Um, you could recommend certain fabrics. You can make it look to fit your personality. Vistaprint is uh, kind of fun. If you don't know what Vistaprint is, it's basically a company that will print your image on almost anything. And they started making face masks so you can highly customize it to your pet or you know, your favorite sports team, or a lot of people are using Vistaprint to print masks with their own face on it, so it doesn't look like they're wearing masks. You can still tell you're wearing a mask, but it's kind of funny. Then there's big companies that are just starting their own line of face masks, like Nordstrom or, Athletic or Athleta, Lucky American Eagle, or like I said, you can check around for a family member or a neighbor. I'm sure there's someone nearby who's making face masks and either donating them or selling them. So some things to consider before you, you buy your face mask is you want to read the reviews. I don't buy anything online without reading reviews and I also always make sure there's pictures for that item. Um, I like to see it. I want to make sure that if I'm getting something with a picture, that it looks good, that it's not pixelated. Um, I want to make sure that other people have used this and can attest to the quality and how long it's going to last me, especially since online is really how we're buying things right now. Reviews can be super helpful. I never buy anything if there's not a handful of good reviews. You also wanna make sure that there's a lot of reviews. Um, two reviews to me is just as bad as having no reviews. So I like to find reviews that are maybe a thousand reviews or something that has 500 reviews. A good substantial amount of reviews will help me understand the big picture about the kind of product I'm getting. And if you wanna use a filter in your mask, you know, make sure that that's an option. Can your the face mask that you're buying hold the filter? Will you wear it? Is it something that you're gonna wear? Um, if you 
you know, get something with a print or a certain kind of fabric, you want to make sure that it's comfortable or something that you're not going to, you know, be embarrassed to wear because the best face mask is a face mask that you wear properly. And then, like I said, if you wear glasses, you might want to consider getting that metal bar over your nose. That's really helped me. Um, I haven't had any issues with my glasses fogging up. And then you want to know if it can be washed before you use it. So if you're getting cloth face masks, that's awesome. You don't have to worry about that. You can pop them in the washer or hand wash them before you use them so you know that they're clean. However, if you're getting single use masks, you wanna make sure that it comes properly packaged. You don't wanna be buying single use masks from a guy in a van on the corner of your street, right? You don't know if it could be dirty. You wanna make sure it's coming to you pre-packaged, sterilized, not used. And so sometimes the reviews can give you an idea of how you're gonna get your package. And then think about how many you're going to need. If you're using a cloth mask, you might not need as many. You might want just a week's worth. Um, you can wash them after every use, but I don't know about you, I don't like doing laundry every day. So maybe having a week's worth would be more beneficial. You can wash it at the end of the week and then you'll have a full week ready for you. Or if you're getting single use masks like a KN95, you want to make sure you have enough for what you're using them for. Uh, like I said before, they come in bulk packaging so you can get them for like 50 in a package or 250, however many you need. You just want to make sure you're getting enough because those are the kind of masks you don't want to be reusing. And then try to find out if it's a reputable company. Is it a company you've heard of? Do they have good customer service? If you have to make a return, what's their return policy? Are you going to be stuck paying for shipping if you do have to return it? So these are all things to think about when you're trying to find a good place to buy a face mask because right now, everyone and everywhere is selling face masks. So now let's talk about filter inserts. I did have a question from Loretta about what you can use as a filter. So these are some of the best things you can use as a filter. And again, they're in order from the best is at the top and the not so good is at the bottom. So simple, super easy coffee filter. Pretty much everybody has coffee filters um, and they come in a package of a lot, right? Um, you don't have to worry about really running out. And if you do, one package should last you a very long time. You can just fold it to fit into your mask, like in the picture, or you can just cut it however you're more comfortable doing. And then a, poly, a polypropylene shopping bag. These are the reusable tote bags that you might have lying around your house. Um, you want to make sure it's clean first, but you can cut them up and put them inside your mask uh, for extra protection. And then paper products. WebMD actually even said paper towels or even a piece of paper will work as extra protection um, in your face mask. You have to remember this filter is going between layers of cloth already. So you already have two to four layers of cloth and then you're just adding even more protection. So you might think you need something super strong and something that's really heavy duty uh, to protect you, but you already have those layers of cloth. So all of these filters are just extra. And then we have the HEPA filters at the bottom, and these are asterisk, and I just wanna take a minute to talk about these. A lot of websites are reporting that these are the best kind of filters to use, but when I did research, um, I found that a lot of people were cutting up vacuum bags because they are a HEPA filter um, and using them as a filter, or uh, you can actually just buy filter inserts for face masks online too. However, when I did more research, I found that HEPA filters specifically sometimes release fibers, and when you're breathing 
your mask in and the HEPA filter is releasing these fibers, they're found inside lungs. So you're breathing in these little fibers. So unless you're dealing with someone who has the coronavirus already, or you're really trying to protect someone in your family, I would not recommend a HEPA filter. I definitely would not recommend cutting up a vacuum bag to use it because those are definitely not made for you know, your body. They're made to protect from dust and dirt in a machine. So they're not having that extra level of protection for ingestion or for breathing in. So WebMD does list them as something you can use as a filter insert, but they do have that noted. So in my personal opinion, I don't want to be using something that's going to be releasing fibers into my lungs. Um, I would not recommend that. Again, like I said, you already have those layers of protection from the cloth and adding another filter insert like coffee filter or a paper towel is going to give you even more extra protection. And that's really all you need, especially for things like walking around your neighborhood or going to the store or going out to a restaurant. So again, I would not recommend a HEPA filter. And do your research if you are buying filters online and make sure you know what they're made of and what you're getting. So some tips for wearing a mask. Again, once it's on, try not to touch it. Uh, it can be really hard, especially since I'm one of those people that when I get told not to do something, I want to do it even more. When someone tells me not to touch my face, all of a sudden I have all these itches on my face, but you really cannot touch your face. You have to assume that as soon as you leave the house, your mask is dirty. So if you just always assume your mask is dirty, as soon as you leave the house, it will give you a better understanding of making sure you don't touch it. If you do have to readjust your mask, make sure you wash your hands after. You wanna make sure that it's covering your nose and your mouth and is secure under your chin. We're not really used to wearing face masks, so I recommend wearing it around the house, practice getting used to it, practice wearing it properly, so that way when you do have to wear it, it's kind of second nature. Also make sure there's no gaps uh, by your nose and by your, um, your cheeks. Those are the most popular places for having masks. Uh, gaps in your mask and then making sure it's secure under your chin and then it might seem obvious but just make sure you can breathe easily because we don't want this right this person uh, was having um, she was uncomfortable didn't want to breathe uh, through her mask so she cut a hole in it and obviously this just negates the mask she's not wearing a mask at this point um, it's it's useless. So like I said, the best face mask is a mask that you're going to wear and you're going to wear properly. So now some frequently asked questions about face masks. Are they mandatory? And in New Jersey, they are. In New Jersey, individuals must use a face covering when shopping at essential retail businesses, entering a restaurant or a bar to pick up takeout orders, and now uh, outdoor dining or when you're traveling on trains or any public transportation. And this is taken straight from our New Jersey website all about COVID-19. The link is on the bottom. So in New Jersey, yes, um, you, it is mandatory to wear a face mask when you're in public and when you're around other people. So what about gyms are gonna be opening soon, right? Should you be wearing a mask when you exercise? So it's a little tricky. It's fine not to wear a mask while you're exercising if you're staying at least six feet away from other people. When you're exercising, your breathing is um, more labored or it's faster, your heart is beating faster. So um, a mask would you know, inhibit proper breathing. So while you're exercising, um, you don't have to wear it unless uh, you're exercising with other people. If you're not six feet away, then you need to be wearing a mask. 
if you're going to work out at a gym, it is recommended to wear in between exercising. So while you're on a machine and gyms have new guidelines, they can only have a certain amount of people indoors and the machines need to be at least six feet away from each other. So when you're on a machine, you should automatically already be six feet away from someone else. But if you get off your machine to go to another machine or if you're using the restroom or to get a towel or a, your water bottle, you should be wearing your mask. Now, like we had talked about before, you should always assume that your face mask is dirty as soon as you leave the house. So when you take it off at the gym, maybe try to have a bag that you can put it into to keep it from getting other things dirty or to keep it from getting dirtier itself. Uh, one of the big questions is, you know, wearing a face mask traps carbon dioxide. Um, so carbon dioxide can linger behind in an N95 mask. Again, that's the mask that the emergency personnel are using, doctors, and uh, there was someone in our questions who said that that's required for them to wear as well. If you wear that for several hours, it could cause mild problems like headache, dizziness, or fatigue but the risk is very low with cloth and surgical masks. So that's why if you're wearing a cloth mask, that's not gonna be an issue. So another question is, if you have a health problem that makes wearing a mask hard, should you still wear one? So there are some um, breathing and um, you know, issues that you might have that you can't wear a face mask or it makes it extremely uncomfortable. And uh, what I've found is that if it makes you unable to tolerate a face covering, you do not need to wear one. Typically, you're going to have to get a doctor's note to support this, um, especially if it's for like a job or um, you might get stopped because in New Jersey, it is mandatory to wear one. You might also be prevented from entering stores um, because it is mandatory to wear a mask inside a store. So if you're not wearing a mask, they have the right to tell you you cannot go inside. So if you're not wearing a mask because of a health issue, you have to make sure that you're definitely practicing social distancing and hand hygiene even more. So you have to go double time on making sure you're staying away from people and you're washing your hands even more than you normally would. Because again, we have to remember that face masks protect other people. They're not protecting you. So when you're not wearing a face mask, you're putting everybody else at risk. And then how often should I wash my face mask? I hope you guys know this answer. I said it a few times, but it is after each use. So again, if it's a cloth face mask, it should go right into the washing machine or right into the solution. If it's not a a reusable face mask, if it's a single use, it goes right into the garbage. So again, I want to reiterate that all of this information is changing every day. Um, we're learning more and more about the coronavirus and how we can help prevent the spread of it and how, how we can help keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. So I totally recommend that even if you're watching this webinar when it is presented, keep checking up on those regulations and the recommendations because they do change. This is a new virus. You know, we're not 100% sure on how to handle it and how to keep everybody safe. We're still learning. So it's very important to stay on top of all of that information. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So to get the most up-to-date information about the coronavirus, you can go to our state's website, which is covid19.nj.gov. Here's a little video about what this website has to offer. So much information. So you can see already asked questions uh, from anywhere from, you know, should I wear a face mask or how do I get tested to I'm having trouble paying my rent because we weren't allowed to go to work or what programs and loans or resources are available to my business has all of the information on there. Then it has a place where you can find services and other information like testing, if you own a business or an organization, if you're a healthcare professional, and then these are the top questions about the coronavirus. So how can you prevent from getting it? If you get infected, when do symptoms appear? And then this is really important at the bottom, they have the announcements. So that's how you can stay up to date to everything that's going on in the state. 
and then it has this cool data dashboard where you can see broken down by county how many cases we have how many tests we've done how many um, people have unfortunately passed away so this offers a lot of information so again that website is covid19.nj.gov and it is also in the resource list that is in your handouts you can also go to uh, the governor's or nj.gov to find all of the executive orders that the governor has signed so if you want more information about like eating outdoors or what actually is allowed for child care services if you click on the number on the left um, over here uh, it tells you exactly what is in that executive order and then on the right it tells you the date issued so you can see when it was issued so you know what is most up to date and that's how you can find exactly what is allowed what isn't allowed what capacity limits there are and everything you need to know also governor murphy has been very transparent about um, what is going on in the state what he's doing to prevent it what our job is to keep everybody uh, being safe and to keep the spread from you know going crazy uh, we've done very well in new jersey um, the governor also does daily um, press releases and information about the coronavirus and you can get all of that information on any of his social media so this is his twitter handle at gov murphy which is the same for his instagram at gov murphy and then his facebook is written out governor phil murphy so he's so transparent and you really um, can find anything about what's going on in new jersey on any of these social medias but let's go over a few of the changes that are happening and that just recently happened. Uh, we just entered phase two, which is huge. So effective immediately, and I'm just gonna go through these because we don't have much time left. Um, we can do indoor gatherings uh, at 25% of the building's capacity or 50 people, whichever one's lower. And we can do larger outdoor gatherings permitted up to 100 people, and that was posted on the 9th. As of June 15th, child care centers opened. June 22nd, organized sports happened. So that's yesterday is when they started. Mm -hmm. And July 6th is youth day camps can start again. Um, opening on June 15th, which was last Monday, outdoor dining, non-essential in-person retail. So again, there is a capacity limit. They're not letting as many people in. And uh, for outdoor dining, chairs and tables have to be a certain feet apart. Libraries are available for curbside pickup, child care centers are open, and drop-off and pickup services are available at New Jersey Motor Vehicles. So as of last Monday, again, like I said, retail stores are open, customers and employees are required to wear face masks, and they have to regularly sanitize areas used by employees along with other safeguards. Last Monday, restaurants and outdoor bars were able to start offering in-person dining in-person outdoor dining uh, yesterday municipal and private club swimming pools were able to reopen um, reopening yesterday again were a lot of salons and um, spas and tattoo parlors tanning salons again yesterday we have drop off and pick up services at a motor vehicle and then on the 29th you're able to do walk-in services like road test licenses and registrations again you have to be wearing a face mask and they're going to have lots of regulations about how far apart you have to be and how many people are allowed inside the building so as of june 29th malls are going to be open so you have to wear a face mask all stores are limited to 50 percent capacity restaurants are able to provide takeout or outdoor dining however food courts will stay closed theaters and arcades are also going to stay closed july 2nd casinos will be reopening at 25 percent capacity and also on july 2nd indoor dining is going to resume at 25 percent capacity so here is uh, some of the risk levels for the social activities 
Uh, so you'll see at the bottom takeout and tennis, where you're really not interacting with other people, is very low on the risk level. However, up at the top, the highest is bars, big concerts, or sports stadiums, right? You still don't want to be around a lot of other people. So you'll notice that gyms, churches, buffets, and amusement parks are just as uh, risky um, and they're at the top of the list. So if you are going to start going to the gym, if you are going to start going back to a religious service, please understand the risk level that you're taking and that you're putting other people in and follow the um, standards that are set, as in wearing a face mask, staying away from other people, and washing your hands. So we're in phase two, but this is exactly what that means. So in phase one, construction workers were allowed to work, retail had to do curbside pickup, elective surgeries were allowed, parks, lakes, and beaches were allowed to reopen just recently, and schooling had to go virtual. Now we're starting phase two. We're gonna have a little expanded retail, outdoor restaurants, limited personal care, museums and libraries can start offering some services, Child care started and summer school and camps will start. Phase three will have expanded dining, limited entertainment, expanded personal care, bars can open, public transit for all, we can go back to school in person, and some offices will open. Now I want to note that Governor Murphy wants everybody to work from home who can work from home for as long as possible. He said, if you are able to and you have the resources to work from home, do so until phase four. Phase four is when everybody can and should return back to work. However, phase four will not start until there is a widespread use of a vaccine or another life-saving treatment is available. So again, we are in phase two. We can look forward to phase three and phase four if we're all being responsible and keeping the virus numbers low. This is all, um, it's not set in stone. So if we are commingling and we're going out with people and we're going to restaurants and the virus starts to rise again and our numbers get larger, because you remember we're in a very densely populated state we very well could return back to phase one, stay at home order, and go back to the beginning. So we need to remember to be responsible. So now I'm curious, we're gonna do a quick poll. Have you participated in any of these activities already? So last week, there was a lot of things opening, um, restaurants, um, barbers, uh, salons, nail salons, pools, and I'm interested in knowing in if you did any of those and what you did. Some people choose to stay home still, um, you know, depending on the kind of people you have in your life. If you're trying to protect someone who is immunocompromised, some people live by themselves and, you know, for your mental health, you need to get out and socialize. So I'm just interested in seeing if anybody has participated in any of these activities. Looks like we've had a little bit of a lull, so I'm gonna close the voting, but feel free to keep answering in the comment section. So we have 31% of people said, yes, you have gone out and participated in these, which, you know, that's why there's safeguards in place. 44% said, no, nor do I plan to. And that number is a lot higher than I thought I was gonna see. And 22% said, no, but I plan to soon. If you said other, just let me know. Um, Barbara, you did takeout. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are doing takeout or, you know, food deliveries, things like that. Awesome. Just uh, in a little poll for my interest to see kind of where a lot of people stand. So it is very important to remember that mask wearing is great and social distancing is great, but we need to be doing both at the same time. So it's still very much important to distance yourself at least six feet away from people you do not live with and wear your face mask. We also in our handouts have this awesome infographic that kind of ties up everything in this training. Frankie made it, it's amazing. Um, talks about the different kinds of masks, who should and shouldn't wear a mask, how to take care of your mask. Um, so that is in your handouts and you can take that and download it now. Here are our resources, and again, these are in your handouts as well, so you can download that and take that with you now.
And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. We are still doing trainings. Um, this webinar will be available on our YouTube and on our website. So if you uh, want to watch it again, if you want to get any of the slides again, it will be available for you to download on our website, which is listed right there at the bottom or on our YouTube or any of our social media as well. So I talked a little bit faster than I usually do because there was just so much information to take in. Um, I'm going to go over the questions now. It is 3.02. I really appreciate you being here with me and uh, learning all about this. Um, so let me go through some of the questions that I haven't got to yet. So uh, Barbara asked, um, when walking out in the neighborhood, is it necessary to wear a mask? So that depends. If there's a lot of people out in your neighborhood, I would wear a mask. But if you're walking out in your neighborhood and you live in maybe Sussex County and there's not that many people out, you don't have to wear a mask. Again, it's to protect other people. So if there are not other people, um, you don't really need to wear a mask. Julia, you asked about face shields. I really am not well versed on face shields. I do know that some doctors wear them. They might be an option if you have trouble wearing a face mask so close to your face, but unfortunately I did not do a lot of research on face shields. But what I can do, Julia, is uh, look into that and get back to you. And Paul, you said you use an N95, but it's required for your work. So you're doing what is required. Like I said, there's a lot of people who aren't medical professionals that use an N95 because they're working in close contact with people who have coronavirus. So if you work in a nursing home or if you work um, in a, an elderly community or a community where there's just a very large number of people that have coronavirus, you might be required to wear one. Um, so Peg, you asked if there are masks recommended for disabled adults who have difficulty with wearing and keeping them on. Honestly, it's just trial and error. There are so many different face masks out there. It's just about finding one that you think is more comfortable that you will wear because that's what's most important, right? The best face mask is a mask that you're going to wear and you're going to wear properly. Um, let's see. So it looks like a lot of you have both single use and uh, reusable face masks. That's awesome. I personally um, am having a neighbor make me some more cloth masks with a metal bar that fit my face better. So I can't wait to get those. Um, someone recommended that if a cloth face mask doesn't fit you properly and you have those gaps, you can take it in with a pin or um, you know, do something to make it more snug. And definitely, I definitely recommend that. Oh, yes, I is also recommended that after you're using your mask, you want to sanitize sink handles. So yeah, you want to not just wash your hands, but make sure you're cleaning all frequently touched surfaces. Um, you can actually, uh, Julia, just Google K95 and find out where else to buy it other than Amazon. I personally got mine on Amazon, so um, I'm not too sure where else you can get them, but if you Google it, I'm sure a bunch of sites will come up. And no, Paul, gay men cannot have an excuse for not wearing a face mask. Everybody needs to be wearing a face mask, no matter what your sexual orientation or religious uh, beliefs are. Remember, this is to protect other people. And let's see. Uh, Jeffrey, there is no way to clean a KN95 mask. It is a single use mask. You should be using it once and then throwing it away. And Julia, the chart is not in the handout, but you can get it when you get the slides. And um, it looks like a lot of people were going out to restaurants. That's fun. Sharon, you asked, when will phase three begin? There is nothing set in stone. There is no date set. We're still kind of just beginning phase two. I would imagine it wouldn't be for a while because the governor wants to make sure that starting phase two is not gonna make the levels of coronavirus pop up again. We wanna make sure um, we're not infecting more people than we need to. Uh, there are still people, unfortunately, dying every day and getting infected 
or uh, you know, um, co contracting coronavirus. So it's still out there. We need to be diligent. So nothing is set in stone. Phase two is kind of a test. If we pass that test, then we can go on to phase three. If we don't pass, we're gonna go back to phase one. And uh, so Kathy, you asked what happens if you use a single use uh, mask many times. It loses its protection every time you wear it. So if you wear it more than once, it's not going to do its job. Also, like we said, you have to assume that your face mask gets dirty as soon as you walk outside of your house. So if you're putting a dirty mask back on your face, you're not really preventing or protecting anything. Um, that's why single masks use, uh, single masks are single masks. They don't, uh, they aren't built for that durability. Um, the filters that are inside those single use masks, like an N95 and a KN95, uh, kind of deteriorate every time you you breathe and you um, if you use it over and over again it's just not going to do what it was meant to do um, so Mary Ellen said that uh, the World Health Organization said you can hand wash your cloth masks with hand soap or just detergent I found that um, I believe it was from the CDC recommended the bleach solution so I would just do more research on what you have, what's available to you, and what is more, um, you know, better for if you have sensitive skin or something like that. And then Kathy, you said, what is the difference in design between N95 and KN95? So an N95 is superior. It is meant to keep things out and keep things in. So if you have coronavirus, it's it's heavily protected. Uh, and very snug to keep that virus in your mask. But it also stops things from getting in your mask. So it is very good protection if you're dealing up close with people who already have the virus. The KN95 is what a lot of people are calling the knockoff N95. It's just not as protective and it's just not as um, well made, I guess. It's a little flimsier. It doesn't have the respirator in it. Um, so it is a lot cheaper too, but that's what makes it good for people who are just using it to go to the store or go for walks around their neighborhood. Um, uh, thank you, Sue Min. I'm very happy that I was able to present this information. Like I said, it was a lot of information. So if you need to, please go back over the slides, take the resources, um, and uh, if you have any other questions, please just um, email me or you can call. Um, and then the last question I'll address, Judy said uh, that single use masks, this is not the information we learned previously. We were told they can withstand a lot, uh, a low microwave or oven at low temps. I have that presentation. It was presented by the New York Public Health. So Judy, my presentation was for uh, people who, um, aren't really working closely with a lot of people who have coronavirus or who are not on the front lines. Like I said, there was a, a shortage of masks, so doctors were having to reuse single-use masks. It is not recommended. You can do it if you follow a certain procedure, but that was just too much that I was willing to go into because uh, a lot of the people that are uh, coming on this webinar are not needing a mask that that is uh, as that protective, um, if that makes any sense. So if you are an emergency personnel and you have just one mask you have to reuse, I do know doctors who have to use their N95 mask over and over again because they don't have that availability to use more than one. There are precautions that you can take, but again, it is not recommended. The best thing to do is to just throw it out and use a new one because that's what it was made for. So again, I thank you guys so much. It was so much information. Thank you so much for staying with me. It is now 3.11. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And again, thank you so much for coming.